message is being broadcast by the Department of Defense of the Republic. At 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, multiple unidentified objects were confirmed to have entered Earth's atmosphere. Discovery Houston, 26 seconds. The LOS Pedras. The first message that comes to you is you are a divine being. You matter. You count. You come from realms of unimaginable power and light, and you will return to those realms. The vast stretches of the unknown and the unanswered and the unfinished still far outstripped our collective comprehension. Broadcasting from Forest Tower Studios, all the way from the Deep South. Now, here is your host, Joe Rubin. Broadcasting from a shack on a hill in the Mossy Creek bottoms of Cane Creek, Arkansas. This is Lighting the Void. I'm your host, Joe Rupp. Welcome. It's Friday night, March the 20th, on into the 21st. Friday night open lines here. We're welcoming back Jeff Harmon. And uh, we're going to be discussing a very important rundown with the coronavirus with Jeff here tonight and what the charts are saying in the future, as well as now. Uh, I think this is kind of like uh, the first time Jeff is going to be talking about this. A lot of people have been asking him to discuss this, so we figure it's time to do this right now. I want to thank the sponsors real quick, ancientlifeoil.com, getthetea.com, metaphorical archaeology. That's if you've had a paranormal experience that's caused you trauma. You can get a free session with Barbara Pro Bono via the Fringe FM by calling 214-995-3754. And also go to the fringe.fm forward slash optics to get all your gear, all of your telescopes, night vision goggles, all that good stuff. Um, I want to give a shout out to UFO Seekers, backed and supported by the Fringe FM and Lighting the Void. That way we can keep a journalistic approach to ufology at UFO Seekers on Twitter and give them a shout on YouTube as well. Follow them, subscribe on YouTube, send them a message, watch the new season, youtube.com forward slash UFO Seekers. Uh, a few people did donate to the show yesterday, so I want to thank you guys, Derek, David, uh, Danielle, really appreciate you guys. Uh, Amanda, thank you so much. You guys uh, have been a big help. And that says a lot because we're a lot of people are going through a lot of stuff right now, you know. So, yeah, I really, really do appreciate that. All right. So real quick, just in case you're listening, you're a new listener. Uh, you don't know about Jeff. Now, Jeff's been an astrologer for 45 years and he uses a ton of different systems. Western astrology, Vedic astrology, astrology, Kabbalistic, uh, astrolocation, horary. You name it. He knows pretty much all of it. And he spent a ton of years in Beverly Hills and has a remarkable client base and a data bank of thousands of case studies. He's currently located in West Hills, California. Now, he's had speeches at places like Ion's MUFON, the Joshua Tree Retreat Center, and the Association of Celebrity Personal Assistants. And he's been a guest on a ton of radio shows, including Veritas Radio, Fade to Black, Coast to Coast, this show. Uh, so a lot of people go to Jeff for um, astrological information. Now, um, he also is, uh, the owner of conjunction entertainment or he runs an entertainment company too. So the man is a busy man and I'm glad you're back here, Jeff at jeffharman.com is the website to tell us what's going on with this thing, man, because I think it's got everybody just a little bit spooked. Yeah, it does. That's for darn sure. And, you know, thanks for having me back on. I've actually been keeping quiet. I've been pretty wiped out myself. I've had some progressions and transits that have been going on in my life. And, um, yeah, it's good. I, I kind of wanted to save coming out and saying anything about, because Camille's telling me all the time, and I've got clients calling her, I'll say, what's going on with this coronavirus thing? You know, is there anything in the astrology that would shed any light on it? And I have to tell you, the, I've been saying for a decade, you know, you mentioned uh, Coast to Coast and all these other shows and Veritas. Everybody's been asking me for years and years. They said, what do you think of the Mayan calendar? What do you think of this? And I said, not much. I can't come up with anything. And I've always been saying the year of change is going to really commence in 2020. This is the year. And unprecedented change. In fact, we had the Saturn-Pluto conjunction in 
January, January 12th of this year. And I've been telling people this for a decade. And, you know, anybody can go back and listen to my radio shows. It's not something new or I, you know, I don't want to say I told you so, but here we are. Every time Saturn and Pluto mixes up, and that's generally between 35 and 40 years, it's about a 38-year average, something major in the plant and the planet happens. For example, just look at the last century. Right, literally, weeks before World War I, we had the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, and then World War I breaks out. Out of the blue, just boom, happens. The next conjunction, we had World War II end. Okay, then the next conjunction, what do we see? Nixon takes us off the gold standard shortly thereafter. Communism falls. On the Saturn-Pluto opposition, we had the 9-11. Everybody remembers that one. And then the bank crash in 2008 and 2009. Well, folks, we just had the uh, Saturn-Pluto conjunction. But why this year is so much different, and other Vedic astrologers has, has mentioned this, is the confluence of events. And that is the lunar zodiac. For anyone not familiar with Vedic astrology, Vedic astrology is exceedingly complex. And you're going to probably run into 20 different people using 20 different methods because there's probably about 50 different methods in Vedic astrology. But one of the core zodiacs in Vedic astrology is not only the sidereal zodiac, but it's the lunar zodiac. And anyone who's been around esoteric occult things knows the moon is a very interesting little satellite that orbits this earth. It's also the closest body that orbits this earth. Well, there's a lunar zodiac that surrounds planet earth. And I always joke around with the astrologers, or I should say not the astrologers, the astronomers, I say no matter how much you polish the lenses on your telescope, you're not going to see this zodiac either. It surrounds the Earth, and interestingly enough, it has 27 lunar mansions. And if you do the numerology, what's two and seven? It's nine. How long is a child in a mother's womb? Approximately nine months. And the moon has always been synonymous with fertility and change and also seeding things on this earth. <clears throat> the farmer's almanac uses it exclusively. Well, well, I wouldn't say exclusively, but very heavily, let's put it that way, the lunations, meaning the, the cycles of the moon. Well, we just had the uh, spring equinox today, which is a huge, huge energy. And what has been going on with this coronavirus, it, uh, I was telling you before the show, Joe, it's almost kind of eerie how accurate the astrology has been with this because the lunar mansions, there's again, 27 of them, and the moon has been in two very destructive lunar mansions. One is called Ardra. Now, some people pronounce it Arudra, but Ardra is one way to say it. It's actually in sidereal Gemini. And Ardra has always been linked to destruction. It's uh, a very transformative uh, energy and, and it's it's and when the it's in fact it's also called the god of destruction is is Ardra, or Rudra if you will and it is the ruler of that nakshatra. Also, so just to be clear, the north node of the moon is sitting in Ardra. And the south node of the moon is sitting in a nakshatra or lunar mansion called Mula. The combination of these twos have always been extremely destructive. Good point in case is during 9-11, the lunar nodes were in these two lunar mansions. See, it takes about 18 and a half years for the nodes to go around the chart. And for anybody who's not familiar with what Rahu and Ketu is or the moon's north and south node, they are not planets, they're mathematical points where the ecliptic of the sun, the moon, and the earth all line up. That's why, that's where eclipses happen. The only reason we get an occultation of the sun or the moon, respectively, on new and full moons, is when all the latitudes 
of these three bodies, the sun and the moon and the earth, line up. So that's called an eclipse. <clears throat> and it's been known for thousands of years. Eclipses have a very powerful effect on the world. But also, so does the nodes themselves. In fact, I should probably tell this story. There's an ancient legend that when God first set up the solar system, or the heavens as they are right now at least, um, this all the angels of the planets were drinking their, what we would call immortal potion. This is the legend. And this demon snuck in and drank the potion too. Well, the sun told God, and there's different versions of this, but the one I'll tell is the sun told God, and the sun was allowed to throw a discus at the demon and cut it in half. The head became the north node known as Rahu, and the tail became the south node known as Ketu. And, you know, I always heard that legend. I thought, well, that's pretty cool. But I have to say, in analyzing charts, they're very, very powerful. Well, the rabbit hole gets deeper. All the planets are right now in between the moon's south and north node, which is called a serpent curse or is also known as a Kala Sarpa Yoga. Now, for anybody who wants to look that up on the internet, Kala Sarpa Yoga means serpent or serpent curse. And I have to say, I've had a lot of clients who have that, and it doesn't mean that, you know, you're hexed or anything, but in a way, it kind of means that you have a very strong karmic destiny to bear. Uh, most of the people that I've seen who have it, and there's going to be a lot of kids born with it between now and May, have come here for a very special purpose to cleanse karmas. Often the, len the, the lessons can be difficult, but they're often divine too. Uh, so we, uh, here's what's interesting. I think this coronavirus was probably released or somewhere in the December area, maybe even as early as November is what the chart shows. Then it really became manifest in China and they weren't too forthright about it in December. It really cut loose when right in the middle of January. And that was the Saturn Pluto conjunction. Also what's interesting is Mars crossed K2, which is the moon's south node, when exactly on the 25th of February. That's when it broke loose like wildfire in this country and around the world. Even though it was manifest, that's when the media jumped on it and you had all these people planting themselves in front of high def cameras and microphones and talking about it. And it was wildfire. And the panic button was hit and it's clearly going on. So what was eerie about that, and that's what I was telling you, Joe, is how accurate the astrology was. When Mars crossed the moon south node, this thing was on fire in this country. It was on fire. That was the 25th of February. Well, here we are. Today's, you know, the, the we're almost a month away in, in March. Um, March 20th is, of course, today's date. And we have... The situation getting worse. And isn't that interesting? Mars just crossed the zodiacal degree today of the Saturn Pluto conjunction. So, see, eclipses are like cookie cutters in the sky, they leave a print in that degree of the zodiac, whether you're looking at the sidereal, the tropical, or the lunar zodiac, it leaves an impression there. They're hot points. The same thing with major conjunctions, like the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. So Mars is just crossing that. And what are we hearing all over the place? The numbers are rising. Things are getting worse. The governors have just issued in California, New York, and other places complete shutdowns. They're, they're literally canceling everything. I don't care if you're a school or what have you. Everything is stay out isolated, stay at home, and uh, emergency situation. I think it's probably going to get a little bit worse. Um, the numbers from, if the astrology is right, and I'm reading it right, I think it's probably going to get worse. But here's some good news. It looks like it's going to peak out into April. And if the astrology is right, as it has been, we're going to probably see it start 
to crack and subside when when the moon's south node, uh, I'm sorry, actually it'll be the north node, leaves Arudra um, into the fourth pada right around the 22nd of April. That's when it should start to really be where the officials tell us, oh, we've got results, we've got, you know, possible antidotes, or we've got, you know, vaccinations or treatments that they now know what's happening. And I think also everything they're telling everyone to do has um, probably paid off a bit. In other words, everyone heeding the non-gathering, you know, the staying in small groups or staying yeah. isolated. Is probably well, from what I see, too, a couple of drugs, they got a uh, one antibiotic that was used to treat, I believe, malaria and then something else right. uh, they're looking at, too, is starting to work. So, um, yeah, I, I hope this thing. So you're saying that there's a good chance that it's going to phase out pretty. Well, and here's the better a month, news. maybe or so. Well, I, I don't think it's going it, to I think it's going to start to decrease in a month. And the reason why I don't think it's going to fade out, I think it's going to start to get better or there's going to be light at the end of the horizon if the astrology is right. Because what happens is the, um, the, the it leaves the fourth pada or ends the final around April 22nd, and the North Node leaves Arudra, uh, that lunar mansion I had spoken about before. So the nodes move backwards throughout the zodiac. So there, there's another nakshakta that happens actually right on the, the um, yeah, it goes into Migrasari. So it's it's a much better nakshakta. Um, it's still intense, but it's not as destructive of those two lunar mansions together and and i have to agree uh, I, i've compared notes with other astrologers and I, I have to agree when i go back these two combinations always seem to bring havoc in the world destruction and mayhem but here's the, the news i wanted to get to joe is the kalasarpa yoga is also adding to this. And, and what that means, if anybody looks at an astrology chart, you can all jump online and look at Astro Deans or wherever you want to go. You will see all the planets, and I mean all of them, including the outer planets, Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto, are between the moon's north and south node. That's pretty incredible because uh, this does happen oftentimes throughout history. I've tracked many times when it's happened. It's very powerful when it happens, but it's really powerful when these two lunar mansions line up with this condition and the Saturn-Pluto conjunction like we just had. So we have a confluence of events that are huge. Most importantly, this Kalasarpa Yoga is broken. When, when I say broken, that means a planet traverses over the nodes, and that will be Mercury. Now, the moon does it every two weeks. I should tell people every two weeks, the moon will swing out over the north and south south node because it takes exactly a month for the moon to go around new moon to new moon. And this particular new moon on the 24th is, is a real pivotal point because it's happening at the square point often referred to in ancient Egyptian astrology as the bendings. The bendings means the exact square point between the nodes. And if anyone looks at the new moon, this this coming up on, you know, it'll be on the uh, 24th at about 2.30 a.m. Pacific time. And if you want to advance that to about 5.30 a.m. Eastern time or wherever you're at, um, you will find it's about 2.29 here. So the point is, that's going to be another powerful trigger. So I, I think the numbers are going to go up, but I think this thing's going to start to subside by the about the 27th of May. Why? Mercury shoots out past the node, the north node, and breaks it. Even though the moon is breaking it every two weeks, that's when it truly starts to fade. So by summer... I think we're going to be back on track. The question is, what's going to be left of the financial systems by then? Right, this yeah. is going to have indelible effect on the world, indelible. Well, you know, another thing, too, that I tend to, to worry about is the psychological state of everybody because, you know, we've dealt with a lot of scares. So every year we've got a scare. It's Ebola. It's, you know, you know what I mean? Every year we've had something that scared us, probably back to 2006. And so a lot of people are getting used to this kind of thing, but I don't think 
I think that kind of worries me in a way too. And I, you know, I don't want to give into any fear here, but when people really start to see how serious this is, if they aren't already seeing it, I'm wondering how we're going to react psychologically. Do the charts show that at all? You know, how things are exactly on a psychological level? Absolutely. This is what I'm saying. This is what I've been saying for a decade. Everyone's, you know, the end of the world is coming every single year. They're taking out billboards, you know, Jesus is coming, all this. And it never happens. Yeah. In fact, I'm, I'm interested to look at history. I actually have astrology books where people have predicted Jesus or the Messiah was coming back in the 11th century. And they were marching them out in the fields and waiting and no one came. And the, the point I'm saying is I don't think this is the end of the world. I think this is a major crisis point that's going to change the world's direction forevermore. And it's very interesting. This Kalasarpa Yoga that we're speaking about actually comes back again when it comes back at the end of this year, right before the inauguration of the next president. Oh. And it's is on when it really comes at, it starts right around December 31st but the moon kind of breaks it it really kicks in about January 11th of 2021 and goes all the way up to March 20th of 2021 so again these Kalasarpa yogas are very very powerful karmic times I'm not trying to be alarmist here but I would tell people this is real. This is really real. This is going to have huge financial implications. It's going to affect almost every area of life. And by the time it's done, I think um, the Fed and the bankers behind the scenes are going to have a colossal mess to clean up. But I think also, and there's some positive news, and I've been saying this too for over a decade, and that is we have the magical Saturn-Pluto reset conjunction happening when literally on the on the winter solstice of 2020 this year. So what does this mean in plain English? My interpretation is we're going to have chaos right now. I think we're going to get through it. Um, and I think we're going to have some major resets in terms of finances. Um, it often makes me raise an eyebrow as to how convenient this was right at this time uh, when the financial system has been yeah, literally right. on the brink of disaster. Yeah. And, and I think we're going to see new innovations and a spirit of people pulling together. You know, one of the things... I, I love to research is the ancient Vedic documents on what the, the they were called rishis. Rishis are like priests or seers. We see the same thing in the Kabbalah. We hear about the saints and the prophets. Well, they actually had angelic beings communicating to them the meanings of this. Well, listen, just listen to this. I'll read a little bit out of well, the... Out I, of I, gotta, I actually got to take a break. I want to leave you off right there. So we, I don't... That's a good cutoff point. We'll come back and talk about this, though, Jeff. It's pretty compelling stuff, man. Uh, I mean, I don't know. This is serious. There's no doubt about it. we got more coming from you, Jeff, when we come back. Stay right there on that story. We'll be right back. from metaphorical archaeology. If you've ever had a traumatic paranormal experience, the effects of it may stay with you for years. Uh, who do you talk to? You can't go to conventional help. What we do is we use emotional freedom techniques or tapping to actually neutralize the effects of that event. Maybe when you tell the story now, your heart races and your palms get sweaty, you don't even want to think about it because you don't know how to neutralize that. That's what EFT tapping does. It neutralizes those emotions. The circuit that that was recorded on is gone. The energy flows freely and you're free of it. And that's what emotional freedom is all about. We offer this as a pro bono service, but this is something that I offer because no one, it seems, is helping people with these experiences. If you'd like to reach me, it's really easy. My cell phone is 214-995-3754. Please leave a message. I will get back to you as quickly as possible. Or you can email me 
barb.eft at gmail.com. And EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques. Reach out to me. It's confidential. This works. You won't believe the results. All right, man, this is Crow 777, and you are listening to The Fringe FM. Hey, this check is wrong. I worked a holiday and seven hours of overtime. Not getting paid correctly is a real pain. It could also hurt our boss if our company provides out-of-compliance checks. That's right. Construction companies doing business with the government can get fined, or officials of the companies can go to jail if the checks aren't right. It's a law. The Davis-Bacon Act has 30 compliance issues for every check, but there is an easy way for construction companies to be in compliance. EMARS offers Compliant Client, a web-based system that finds and corrects all 30 of the possible out-of-compliance check issues. Users of Compliant Client report an 80% savings in time and money. Running a weekly payroll usually takes about five minutes. All 15,000 plus clients of EMARS have never had a legal compliance issue. Plus, they sleep better on check day. Contact EMARS at emarsinc.com or call 480-595-0466. Right, me old chiners. I know it's an ad break, but before you lot shoot off and make yourself a cup of Rosie Lee or whatever else it is you're going to sling down your Gregory Peck, you need to listen to me bubble. If, like me, you found your way to light in the void via a downloadable podcast, you might want to take a butcher's at the Fringe FM Wind and Kite. You won't Adam and Eve how many other shows there are or what they rabbit on about. Ancient history, conspiracy, the consciousness, the esoteric, the occult, metaphysics, parapolitical, ufology, technology and spirituality to name but a few. They got featured hosts like Ryan Gable, Jeremy Scott, Alex Exum, Tim Doyle, Cortana and Gigi, Susanna Ross, the Reverend John Polk, Michael Deacon and J.D. Lewis. You might find yourself listening to the thoughts and theories of the author of The Fish you just finished reading. Or you could pick up the dog and bone, call in and tell everyone your own beliefs or experiences. So do me a favour. Before you put on the ansel or crack open a bottle of vino or roller joint, Go to the Fringe FM and see what you're missing. From a cave in the depths of your mind, it's Light in the Void with Joe Root. The Fringe FM isn't just a radio station. We also provide services for all your audio production needs. If you're interested in live radio or pre-recorded podcasts, we're here to help. We even do audio enhancements and voiceovers if needed. If you want to do a podcast or live radio show and even want the option to syndicate on terrestrial radio from simple audio file enhancement to live production and call screening, we have you covered. We have worked with some of the best professionals in the business in order to provide coaching instruction for content creation, show structure, and more. Contact The Fringe Digital Media for more at info at thefringe.fm. That's info at thefringe.fm. Or call 501-777-5631 for a consultation. Hey, I'm J.M. DeBoard, and when I want to talk about dreams, I look up my man Joe Root and his show, Lighting the Void. You're listening to Lighting the Void. The call-in number is 1-800-588-0335. If you would like to text, you can text in at 501-777-5631. All right, welcome back to Lighting the Void. Jeff Harmon, our guest tonight, and we're doing the his breaking first report on the coronavirus and all things that are going on, what some people are using this word, apocalypse. Even people have kind of mocked it, called it the zombie apocalypse. But it is very serious. I mean, when people are killing each other for toilet paper, you know we got problems, right? So let's say this. Uh, before the break, Jeff, you were talking about the Lunar Mansions and the Rishis, and I had to cut you off there. So, yeah. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Go ahead and finish what we were discussing. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, you know, and, and this is, you know, I had a, a great talk here on the break. One of the things that is happening right now is something that probably is destined to happen in a spiritual way because this nakshatra, remember, I, I, I want to, it's kind of hard to relate to this on radio without showing you visually. But if someone were to look at a, an astrology 
or you could say an astronomy wheel is what I like to call them, because it really is astronomy. The moon's north node is sitting in what we call a rudra or ardra, if you will. And it's going to leave that nakshatra. It's actually been in there since last September, but it's the combination of these two when they lock in. So what's going to be interesting is we get a shift right approximately on the 22nd of April. But this Mula Nakshatra is another one I haven't talked too much about. Mula is literally a very destructive, almost brutal force. Um, I have a lot of ancient texts here that I was mentioning the Rishis, were, which are called the priests or the seers, if you will, had interpreted a lot of this ancient Vedic astrology. And it's taken me many years to learn Vedic astrology, and I, I can humbly submit I do not know everything about Vedic astrology. If you ever meet anybody, a teacher included, who tells you they do, they're lying. Because Vedic astrology is so ancient, it is so divine and so complex, and it's so intermingled with the soul. That's why I love the Egyptian stuff as well, because they're exceedingly close. The Torah, which is the ancient Kabbalistic uh, stuff that goes in with the souls, all this fits like a glove with what I'm talking about here. And basically, this This mula, this lunar mansion, was interpreted by the seers as a purpose for transforming human animality or animal traits to spiritual. Or you could say it takes people's maybe animal tendencies or cruel tendencies and purifies them. Isn't that interesting? So the transmutation of animality, or you could say materiality, and self-centeredness is transformed into sympathy, spirituality, and altruism are probably the most important characteristics of mula. And you want to see people get humble. It's when they, A, run out of money, and they need to start depending on one another. Um, we're already seeing that from the government. Now, I know I can't say anything positive about Trump. I'll have Priuses pull up to my house and throw bricks through the window. But <laughs> I think what we're seeing right now is an effort by the government to say, listen, we're going to try and help you any way we can. We're going to try and get through this any way we can. Well, you know, a lot of people have busted on the Federal Reserve and all that. But I have to say, America is exceedingly blessed to have these bankers in one sense, and that is we've been able to print our way out of almost every crisis, including world wars, bank crashes, 2008, you know, crises, etc. They're going to have to do it again. And this one's probably going to be bigger than anything we've ever seen, because from every person I've spoken to, and I actually have some clients that work in world and Fed banks, and they tell me, Jeff, you have no idea how colossally overextended the Western financial system is, oh, not just yeah. America, but, but you're, it could be over hundreds of trillions of dollars in debt. No one really knows. I mean, there's all kinds of theories. I certainly don't know. But here's what's interesting about here, here we're looking at people who probably lived thousands of years ago. No one really knows. These rishis are seers who wrote the Vedas. And they're saying that when Rahu and Ketu come into, meaning the moon's north and south, come into these joint nakshatras, destruction happens for the purpose of bringing spiritual ascension to the world. And isn't that an interesting? So the karmic nemesis is that People need to release, if you will, and that's not going to be easy to do in this crisis because this really is a crisis, and then find some way to kind of put away their selfishness and help each other to the best that they can. And there's a lot of people I know. I got I got a friend of mine who's a multimillionaire, and I love this guy. He, he drives around in a beat up old pickup truck. And I said, Mike, I said, you know, you got millions of dollars. What are you doing driving this old beat the crap Toyota with the windows smashed out? He looks at me, he says, yeah, but Jeff, would you steal anything out of that? I said, actually, I wouldn't. <laughs> so, and he delivers food to people all the time. He's always delivering to the homeless. And, you know, th this is a time when I think our spiritual um, integrity is going to really be called upon. I think we're going to get through it. And I think this Saturn-Jupiter conjunction, oh, by the way, I should tell you, this mula, this very destructive uh, 
Nakshatra or Lunar Mansion does not end until September 19th of 2020. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So we get the improvement with Ardra being completed with Rahu. See, Rahu and Ketu move backwards. So they're not just 180, they're 180 degrees opposite, but these lunar mansions are 13 degree, 20 minute segment slices of the zodiac. So it's very complex. You know, you'd have to be looking and understand Vedic astrology to understand it. And as they move you know, backwards through the Zodiac, and they do this about every 18 to 18 and a half years, um, they kind of slip forward and backwards and forward and backwards as they go. Um, it's called a retrograde motion and direct motion. So the, uh, the point is, is that this destructive thing doesn't complete until September. Well, guess what happens in September? Mars goes retrograde. See, and Mars only goes retrograde every two years. So is this the end of the world? No. I just think we're going to see a lot of wild and crazy stuff. In fact, I've been looking forward all the way up to 2025. The United States itself has a Pluto conjunction that only happens once every 240 years, approximately that goes on basically from 2000, February of 2024. It does it three times. It, in other words, Pluto conjuncts the United States Sibley chart, which is the signing of the Declaration of Independence recorded by Ebenezer Sibley, which I found to be pretty accurate. And that happens three times in 2024. We also have a Saturn-Pluto conjunction with the U.S. chart starting next spring. So all of this leans towards new era is coming in. New era. This is the beginning of some of the transformation. I mean, right now in Los Angeles, uh, landlords are being told you you can't collect rent for the next three four months. Hmm. That's unprecedented. It's unprecedented. I have clients in New York right now. They're shutting down restaurants. I mean, it's it's just colossal. Think about living in New York. That's like being in a sardine can and getting next to the sar getting mad to the sardine next to you that you don't have any elbow room. Yeah. You know. I mean, it's yeah. it's colossal. I mean, I get that. You know, like the, even in our individual lives when we go through hard cycles and you know, karmic cycles, and we finally learn our lesson, we go through something really tough, and then, bam, life's great again, right? But, but here, here's where I'm concerned, though. Like, this stuff is just too convenient for a lot of ways, and I think it's it's going to deepen our dependence on the federal government even more, and I don't really like that. That kind of freaks me out a little bit. Well, you know, and there's been a lot of conspiracy theories around this coronavirus, <clears throat> and I've actually had many people asking questions. I'm not a fan of, you know, conspiracy theories, but I'll tell you what I've seen, what the charts seem to say. I do not think the United States government did this over in China, and I don't think China did it. But what's interesting, that may be a possibility if the interrogation charts are right, that this was caused by a very high level force. Meaning when I say that, I think, you know, many people have heard about the black ops and the shadow governments. These are forces that are way beyond the US and, you know, Israeli governments and Chinese. There, there are other forces that operate outside of governments. And can we say the word bankers? Um, well, there may be, yeah. and I don't want to start, I don't want to make wild allegations here, but there is a possibility from what I see in the chart that this could have been possibly um, something to do with someone doing that. Well, I, I will slip. say this. People need to do their research on, on the people that the companies that are involved with vaccines and stuff and listen yeah, to yeah. some TED talks about how population control might be a good thing and you might find some pretty rich characters in those crowds, you know? Um, so it doesn't, um, I mean, when you look at the stats, right, it, the stats of the death toll and everything, that's what really freaks me out. Cause it's almost like the virus has a conscience. It doesn't want to take out, it's perfect for population control, but for anybody of a certain age or older, this is the most terrible thing in the world. And I got to tell you too, some people I've already ran into that really bother me are just doing some stupid stuff and they ain't making this any easier going to work with pneumonia, stuff like that, you know, haven't been tested. We got to starve this thing out, man. We can't, we can't beat it that way. 
You just stay home, you know, what yep. you need to do. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll say one thing that I think is smart to do, and I don't hear too many people talking about this. Uh, my mother was in the medical field most of her life, and um, <clears throat> one of the smartest things people can do, and I certainly can't give medical advice, and I'm not going to proclaim any cures for coronavirus when I, because I don't want any lawsuits. But I will say this. I think it's wise for people to find ways to not only listen to what the government's telling them and stay isolated because this thing is really contagious. I, I know several people who've had it and they're pretty sick, especially older people. Um, <clears throat> things like olive leaf extract. I'm not mm -hmm. claiming it'll cure coronavirus, but what I will say is olive leaf extract, oregano oil, these kinds of things can strengthen the immune system just from plain getting a cold. It helps a lot. Oregano oil is amazing. Things like the chaga mushroom. I don't know if people have heard of that. Chaga is a mushroom that actually grows in the birch tree. And you can grind that up and put it with um, the uh, – I, I like to grind it up with licorice root. Uh, I take licorice uh, sticks. They're actually sticks, and they're very, very sweet. And it sweetens the chaga mushroom. Licorice is extremely good for what? The lungs, you see? So there's a lot of – you know, people could consult naturopathic doctors. You could consult the Internet. And, again, I'm not making any wild claims that any of this stuff will cure coronavirus. What I will say, though, is I've had many doctors, and including my own research, Research, and I have kept myself healthy and many others that I know have too by just strengthening the immune system, period. Isn't that smart? I mean, it, whether or not you get the coronavirus, isn't it smart to keep yourself healthy, cut back on, you know, toxic things and, you know, eat well and, and maybe take herbs that potentially can strengthen your immune system. The only danger I would say is if anyone's on medications, it's really not wise to combine any kinds of herbs with pharmaceuticals because I uh, uh, check with your doctor because I don't want to be responsible for anything like that. But I just wanted to throw that out there that olive leaf X extract combined with oregano. If you're a healthy, functioning person, you may find a little bit of that if you feel something is quite wonderful to, to make you feel better. Again, if you got coronavirus, well, then go see the doctor. I'm not claiming it cures that by any means. But that stuff I've been doing for years and many other people I know. Homeopathics, too, are, are amazing, you know, to, to curb a lot of things. Yeah, you can all in uh, lacquer thinner works, too, you know. <laughs> I'm just playing. Don't let anybody do that. A <laughs> regular oil may feel like lacquer thinner if you're not used to taking it. Uh, the stuff I take is wild oregano oil. It's really, I mean, it'll make your eyeballs cross. It's like white lightning when you take it. It's strong. But it's profound, you know. And some people like the pills. They, they get the gel caps, and the gel caps have the oregano oil in it. And then when you just swallow it, it releases, you know, once the stomach acids eat through the gel cap. But um, again, now I'm not claiming anything that it cures coronavirus and all that. I am saying, though, it's a wonderful immune system booster. You know, and in that fact, oregano oil is mentioned in the Bible. It's so, pretty amazing stuff. So, so, so as far as the virus goes, you think yeah. it's going to start? I, I think what we all just want to see is we want to see the numbers stop climbing. That's what we want to see. First, yeah, I mean, exactly. that would just be nice to see. Um, even here, the percentage rates is what's kind of scary, how fast it's spreading. Um, and it's usually they say the warm weather kills stuff, but I don't know if that's going to work for this one, you know, so... Well, uh -huh. it hasn't been that warm in a lot of places. In fact, the weather patterns have been extremely erratic. I just had a dear friend and client up in Montana. They had 100-mile-an-hour winds up there. And it just uprooted like 200 trees on their property. And that's unprecedented. That's never happened up there. So we're seeing weird errat erratic weather patterns. And I think a lot of this is the grand solar minimum. I really do. I think the sunspots are lower. The magnetics have changed. You add that to the Kalasarpa Yoga Again, that's all the planets between Rahu and Ketu. And then you further couple that with the two very destructive combinations of the lunar mansions that the nodes are in. 
And last but not least, the one I've been talking about for many years, the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, we got a cocktail here for a colossal change of the world. However, at the end of this year, we have the magical Jupiter-Saturn reset conjunction, which means a new era is born. And I still say we're going to see it like the Jetsons within the next 10 to 20 years. I really do. I think it's going to explode. It's already exploding. It's going to be like a Blade Runner fallout thing that forces technology to happen. Yeah. I, yep. uh, that, that is interesting. I'm think, I could see that happening. You know, well, look, look what's going to happen as a result of all this. You're going to see manufacturing come in back into the United States like we've never seen before, but a different way. It's going to come in in high tech automated manufacturing. You're going to see stuff that's going to happen in this country like we've never seen before. I think it's a technological revolution we are right around the corner from. We just got to get there. We got to be strong because I think between now and this summer, we got a crap storm over us. And this is going to be a very rocky year. Some people have made claims that they think President Trump is going to be knocked out. I, I, I don't get that. And part of the reasons I've heard people say that is because Donald Trump, for the first time in 18 years, will have the moon's north and south nodes conjunct his north and south nodes. Believe it or not, Donald Trump was born during a Kalasarpa yoga. He actually missed it. There was a two week on, two week off period, just like we're going through now when Trump was born. In fact, anybody born around that time would have had it. These conditions happen a lot. But the difference was, is his moon broke it. If, If Trump would have been born Literally 40 minutes earlier, he would have had a full Kalasarpa yoga. He doesn't. Why? Because the moon passed the south node. So this summer, uh, Trump is going to have his uh, nodal return, which, again, only happens once every 18 years. I, you know, again, I'm, I don't want to say anything good or bad about Trump because I'll, I'll just get attacked. I get hate mail. But that actually happens to Trump when? Right in October, right before the election. I think he's going to win again, and I don't think anything's going to stop him. Um, I, I think he's going to. Well, especially now. Rights. I mean, um, you know, my dad's like one of the biggest Democrats on the planet, and even he had, he didn't have anything to say when Trump was talking about the stimulus package and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, so now what, right? Like, they're going to do what they got to do. It's just, yeah. I, I feel like this happened so fast. I feel like it could have been prevented but I mean, we we already went down that road. There's nothing we can do about it. It's just one of those times where I think we got to, honestly, and I've said it a million times, Jeff, we've got to learn how to depend on each other more and take care of each other and do the right thing towards each other. And In that kind of ways, coincides this is, spirituality. Yeah, it's purification. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. So, really is. so when do you think, I mean, do the charts show like this stuff? like just gone i mean are we going to get back to regular society the way it was before or are we talking about a a permanent change here possibly coming down the road that may never be the same again because of this well i don't think the world's ever the same you know from one moment to the next it's uh, i mean the the, the one thing constant is 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 change. That's the only thing that's constant i think this is the mark of a new era being born and it, I really do. And I think that new era starts particularly next year. But this is certainly the precursor set up to it. Um, I think a lot of us didn't expect this. I didn't know how to call it exactly, but I, I knew something was going to happen. I, I knew it. It's just how would it happen? What version was going to come at us? And this is it's the perfect storm when you think about it, because it is paralyzed everyone of every ilk of every race creed of every you know country it just it's wiping out everyone it's it's like taking everyone uh, it almost feels like the witch of narnia just froze us all <laughs> you know, stay in your house yeah, you, know, right. you know, can't move you know so we're waiting for aslan to come by and unfreeze us which is probably going to start to happen at the end of may um, that's what I get. I, I think we're going to see the the numbers start to level off and crack 
the latter part of April. It's likely to go up a lot. I mean, I, I can only tell you what the astrology says. And, you know, if I'm reading it right, I see the numbers going up. So we have a Mars-Saturn conjunction. We we got a lot of dicey stuff going on. Um, Mars is going to leave sidereal Sagittarius and then it's going to go into sidereal Capricorn. That's its sign of exaltation. Well, guess what? When it does that, it's conjuncting what? Saturn. When? Right at the end of this month, about the 30th to 31st. You know, and I can't sugarcoat that one. That can be really dicey stuff. Um, Mars and Saturn join up about every two years, but again, you got to couple that with the nakshatras, astro- astrology is not simple. It's exceedingly complex. You have to look at a confluence of all factors and weigh it out. It's like driving in traffic. You, you just, unless you're the only car on the road, you're going to deal with all the conditions, the weather, the other cars, the road conditions, the condition of the road. It's, it's just like that, but more complex. And so everything factors in. And one of the major factors here is uh, the moon's nodes being in these very destructive lunar mansions, Ardra and Mula, respectively. That And, and Mars is going to conjunct Saturn. So the numbers are likely to spike here into April. And then we start getting a shift around. I would look for whether we see it directly, but the energy should start to subside somewhat at the end of April. And I think that's also when a lot of the officials are going to get a handle on how to deal with this thing. And then uh, by May 27th, the Kalasarpa Yoga breaks. Well, and that's, that's I, think, I mean, it could be worse. You know, a lot of people were talking, uh, you know, like a year late. I mean, people have said all kinds of stuff. But, uh, yeah, we're at the top of the hour. We'll continue to talk about this stuff here, too, with the coronavirus and what's going on and what the astrology says, as well as take some of your questions, too, for for Jeff. When we come back right after these messages, stay with us. Also, you can join the Fringe FM chat room, thefringe.fm forward slash chat room, or call in at 1-800-588-0335. We'll be right back. The Fringe FM. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You love the new Paranormal Radio app from Talk Stream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now, the Paranormal Radio app free in google play and the ios app store hey this is no way jose a northern california piscean stuck in the arizona desert i'm a void walker and i got the shoes to prove it so what do i do when my soul yearns to delve deep into the realm of the unknown i aim my satellite straight into the night sky and catch a smooth ride on the ktlk db radio waves i tune into lighting the void with joe root on the french fm joe Lighting the Void is the best show on the planet. This is Barney, your friend from Facebook. Thank you and all the crew for all you do. Namaste, my friend. This is Macon from the Foothills of North Carolina, and I am a Void Walker. G'day, Void Walkers. This is Lily from Down Under Australia. The world may be small, but Enigma is greater. So let your curiosity take you for a journey with Joe Root. Hey, this is V, coming in from Central Maryland. And I am a Void Walker. This is Kevin Darkerty, a beginner Void Walker. I'm from Vancouver, BC. I know a little about a lot, and uh, as Leonard Skinner said, I guess the rest. I learned a lot from uh, Mr. Root and the show. And I uh, heard it from the beginning. I knew right then he was going to be a new art bell. Thanks for all your uh, shows and keep it up. Hey, this is Derek from Mass, a.k.a. the Night Stalker, and I'm a Void Walker. This is Mark from Chicago, and I walk the void to ascertain what is consciousness. 
My name is Jared Johnson, and I'm from Humboldt County, California. I do not know all the answers to the questions about reality. I do not claim to know the ultimate truth about life. I seek that which has been made hidden as a part of a family of explorers of consciousness. I'm a void walker. Thanks, Jaru. I'm Clyde Lewis. You are listening to The Fringe FM. Hey, is that a new music app? Yeah, check it out. Surfer Music Discovery. It links to thousands of online stations, but the twist is you see the song names and artists that are now playing live. That's different. No guessing. Looks like a waterfall of music. So many formats. Rock, oldies, country, R&B, jazz, and a whole lot more. How's that spelled? Surfer. S-U-R-F-R. Is it expensive? It's free. No need to sign up or sign in. Get the Surfer Music app free from Google Play or the App Store. Have you ever seen an ad or banner which brought you a feeling that someone is reading your mind or even listening to your conversations? Your online data is being used against you. Surfshark is a VPN service that makes online privacy protection easy and attainable. You can use it on as many devices as you'd like simultaneously. Surfshark encrypts all internet traffic sent to and from your devices and ensures that your IP address remains hidden. The VPN service that we use at UFO Seekers plus one month free for $1.99 a month. Visit surfshark.deals slash seekers. We all have that story to tell in our lives. The winds were howling. The ground shook. You could hear rushing water. And then history repeats itself. When there's no power, refrigeration fails. Doors with their shelves strip bare. ATMs can't operate. Deliveries stop. Then what? These events can last days or weeks. You need a plan. In statements made during recent interviews, FEMA Administrator Brock Long has repeatedly urged all Americans to understand three truths. FEMA is broke. The system is broken. If this is the new normal, Americans can't rely on federal cavalry when disaster strikes. Don't get caught out in the elements empty-handed. Prepare with us by going to preparewiththefriends.com and get your two-week food supply, 92 servings, eight food varieties with 25-year shelf life, normally $137, now only $75. Or get a month's supply, normally $247, now only $147 shipped in one business day. Just go to preparewiththefriends.com or call 888-440-7931. That's 888-440-7931. Get this great offer and be prepared while it lasts. Hey, Fringe listeners, this is Dave Cruz, host of Beyond the Strange Radio, asking you to join us live Sunday evenings at 7 p.m. Pacific Time, 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on The Fringe FM. Visit beyondthestrange.com for links to chat, social media, and schedules of the show. And remember, always stay strange. Asta. What's happening, French family? Night Stalker here with your update on the world of weird and all things French. Today we're going to take a closer look at the impact coronavirus has had on the world of technology, virtual reality, and artificial intelligence. It's been a very strange time for technology, with website after website curating lists of things to watch or activities for all those quarantined at home. Many industries are now being forced to transition to new models. For instance, the NCAA is currently in the midst of simulating March Madness after the virus was forced to shut down all gameplay. Travelandleisure.com, CNN, USA Today, and more have been sharing articles and highlighting things such as museums around the world hosting virtual tours and concerts to enjoy during the privacy of your own home. Housing Wire is reporting an increase in virtual home tours in the world of real estate. Even the fashion world is, ex- is experiencing the change. Vogue Business reports, while calls for a new approach to Fashion Month have accelerated, this season's spate of cancellations with Seoul and Tokyo Fashion Week being the latest due to COVID-19 have clarified the need for technology that facilitates an alternative to in-person fashion shows, presentations, and showrooms. There is a huge focus on everyone working in immersive technology, creating a sense of presence, says Matthew Drinkwater, whose fashion innovation agency has worked on a number of projects that use augmented, virtual, and mixed reality, a group collectively referred to as cross-reality, or XR. He says that creating a sense of immersion is critical to the success of digital events. It's not about using XR to take us away from people. It's more about how the development of those platforms will connect us in ways we could have never anticipated. Now, the idea of adding connection seems great, but many of us who live in the fringe have a hard time not seeing the potential negatives or dangers to this increase in technology. Those fears have not been lessened, especially after receiving word of these next few stories. According to the Seattle Times, the U.S. government is in active talks with Facebook, Google, and a wide array of tech companies and health experts about how they can use location data gleaned from Americans' phones to combat the novel coronavirus, including tracking whether people are keeping one another at safe distances to stem the outbreak. Public health experts are interested in the possibility that private sector companies could compile the data in anonymous, aggregated form, which they could then use to map the spread of the infection. 
according to three people familiar with the effort, who requested anonymity because the project is in its early stages. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be known either. Analyzing trends in smartphone owners' whereabouts could prove to be a powerful tool for health authorities. Somewhere between abnormal and paranormal, there's a show called Into the Paranormal. I'm Jeremy Scott. Hear me live Saturdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern on the Fringe FM. All right, sorry about that, y'all. That was the wrong news, so I just went ahead and clipped out of that. Uh, so the Rogi Report will be up on the next hour. Tonight, we're here with the Jeff Harmon. We made the switch from Skype to Zoom, so hopefully the uh, sound quality is going to be a whole lot better. And then uh, we can continue this discussion. Jeff's been talking to us tonight about the coronavirus and how uh, a lot of the Eastern charts. You know, I wonder why none of the what didn't any of the Western zodiac or charts line up with this event at all or is it all just pretty much eastern charts showing everything or eastern uh information well, Jeff? well they both do you know i mean you can see all the planets in between the north and the south node whether you're using tropical or sidereal astrology i think where vedic astrology shines in this particular instance is the lunar mansions being shown by the moon's north and south node and, you know, people who research ancient astrology will probably find also that there's lunar mansions in the Arabic and Egyptian astrology. But my take is they're not as accurate as the Vedic. The, the Jyotish, or you could say Jyotisha is the name of Vedic astrology. It's called the light of the soul. It's, it's more accurate when you look at a sidereal positioning of the lunar mansions. They're, it's just way more accurate. And it's really showing it. But I, I, I think also, too, Joe, I would say that the Saturn-Pluto conjunction is also, whether you look at that in any zodiac, whether tropical or sidereal, it happened January 12th. And that's when this thing caught on fire uh, in China. And I think it was already on fire, actually. Um, but when Mars crossed the, the south node, and you can look at that in tropical or sidereal, that's when it came loose in this country it really cut loose well you know um so what what do you what are you guys doing out there in california like are you guys staying kind of uh pin up are you social distancing and doing all that stuff as camille oh, yeah we're locked down i mean we are locked down nobody i i the other day i had to go up into uh, thousand oaks and or gora hills and i was amazed uh the the freeway was pretty light uh, i saw a lot of service trucks but yeah, restaurants are closed. The only way they're open is for carry out or home delivery. Uh, I mean, this place is shut down. I mean, shut down. The, the court systems are all down. Uh, the only thing that's open is doctor's offices, pharmacies, um, grocery stores, and they're only open certain hours of the day. People can, uh, they're not allowed to hoard. Like you can't go in and buy, you know, a grocery cart full of water. You can only buy so many units. They're rationing things. Um, I couldn't believe my eyes. Uh, literally a week ago, I went into Ralph's to pick up some water. There wasn't any. And the guy looks at me and goes, look at these shelves. There's nothing here. Camille would go into the grocery store to buy something and the shelves were vacant. I mean, gone, empty. I mean, people are freaked out about this. This is this is truly a pandemic. It really is. Yeah, it's, uh, man, I don't know if I got enough toilet paper now. I'm starting to worry. I got a couple of uh, cases of toilet. What What is it with uh, the toilet paper? It must be the running joke. I think if we all keep a sense of humor, even though it's real, but I think if we all keep well, a sense I, of humor, I would that's worry funny. about. Yeah, I think what goes in in is is a lot more important right now than what's coming out. I would, I would <laughs> yeah, worry right. about good food yeah. and keeping yourself healthy. Uh, I think you know, I think this virus is absolutely for real, and I think um, I think the health officials are right. It's exceedingly contagious, and there's a lot of people with it, and I think there's going to be a lot more. Oh man, well. What, uh, what did we, what could uh, we do spiritually maybe to help? I mean, just pray and meditation, right? That's basically it. I think is the only thing I could, that's all I've been doing lately, to be honest with you. I think on the practical side too, it's, it's wise to heed what they're saying, you know, stay away from people, stick with your family, you know, get your food and, uh, stay at home. You know, I mean, we got to look at one thing we've most Americans have running water, 
We've got soap, water, we've got food, we've got great environments. I mean, just think if this was a hundred years ago, a hundred years ago, you had outhouses um, and very few people had running water and electricity 150 years ago. That's for sure. And what we have right now is a lot better. We all have our internet. We all have our cell phones and our communication devices. And, you know, we, we just got to, I think, wait this one out. The astrology, again, I have to say was so accurate. It was creepy. I, I, I looked at Camille. I says, look at this. I said, precisely when the Mars, when transiting Mars cross the moon's south node, this thing cut loose. And what did it do? It did it in that very destructive nakshatra of Mula. See, that was the key. And if I, if I read more on that, it kind of would freak you out. And I, I don't want to be too, you know, startling. But it's, it's end messages that it's to bring transmutation out of materialism Animal and animal behaviors or animalistic tendencies and also self-centeredness. And, you know, it's interesting because a lot of people who are spiritual and in religions all agree on one unanimous thing. And, and this is the thing I find really interesting in my research in some of the very deep, ancient Vedantic and Kabbalistic stuff is they say true introspection in this world even an hour is worth hundreds of years in the astral worlds, <clears throat> meaning that when we exit the body known as death, time isn't the same there as it is here. And I've actually got some really fascinating ancient documents that talk about some of the clearing that was done on souls that were possessing other people's bodies at the time in order to communicate. And they said that the time that they were called was minutes on the earth and it was this huge length of time in the astral worlds and i don't think it's linear everywhere either so time is a very interesting thing and where i'm going with all this is that they say most effective purification or rectification of consciousness is done while we're incarnate in these lives in other words people waking up spiritually in in our lives which you could call it repentance or repentance or you could say um clearance um there, there's an ancient word for it in hebrew that's called teshuvah teshuvah is a very interesting word because it means clearance and repentance, among other things. And uh, there's actually gates that are in the ancient Kabbalistic texts called the Shari Teshuvah, which means the gates of clearance of the soul. And, um, you know, again, we have to be practical here, but I would also say on the spiritual side, this is a time when it's time to let things go, holding grudges or, you know, all that. Yeah, I don't want to get preachy here, but it's a great time to really kind of say, listen, we're all spiritual beings having a physical experience here. Um, you know, again, I don't want to say too much here positive about Trump that, you know, I'll get people mad at me, but I have to commend him that at least he's saying, you know, we're going to figure out a way to print our way out of this. It'll come back. And I actually think he's right about that. I, I do think it's going to come back. I think a lot of people though are going to take a big financial hit. Like look what they're doing, the stock market, they're actually stopping it. They're preventing it from crashing all the way. I know we, we looked at some stocks that we had today and had they not stopped it, they'd be gone. They'd be gone. Well, you so know, there's a lot of good things happening. The, the, yeah. And it's not the time to get all stressed out either. You know, like I know it's stressful, but man, you know, I hope that most folks can keep a calm head and just be, you know, uh, I would agree. You just keep a calm head, do what you can until you can't do anything anymore. Then, because that's the way I look. I just do what I can, try to think and plan and do it the best you can until you just can't no more. And then you're just kind of, you know, have fun with the time you got. There's tons of books and movies out there and radio shows and podcasts to listen to. And, and I mean, if you're spiritual, there's all kinds of stuff to do, you know? Yeah. And I'll tell you, now's not the time to be smoking and drinking. I'm not here to tell anybody, but you know uh, what to do, but it's a great time to take care of your health. Like I said, you know, it, things that we can do to strengthen the immune system and you know, just little things like drinking ginger tea is so good. You can get ginger at the, um, at the grocery store. 
um, aloe vera juice, all these kinds of things. Not that they necessarily, ginger is a really good cleanser. It's very, very good. You just take ginger, cut it up, put it in the teapot. Um, oregano oil. Again, olive leaf extract has been used for thousands of years. So has oregano oil. Um, used in sparing amounts. And, you know, again, if somebody's on medications, t- talk to your doctor before you use it because you don't want to combine this stuff with meds. But, you know, in general, these kinds of things can really help us, you know, strengthen the immune system where we're feeling a little bit off. I've been taking a lot of it. It's helped me a lot. Yeah. Uh, I've been taking the olive stuff that you're talking about, vitamin C. Yeah. It's like, um, but here's the thing too. It wouldn't be a bad idea. Actually, what I've been doing is kind of, learning uh from you a little bit you know learning a little bit more basic astrology it's it's here's the thing about radio jeff everybody may be out of work but i ain't i gotta keep doing what i'm doing brother and it's uh i'm kind of used to being all up in the shack so i don't know um but the rest it's of the a world good thing, huh? yeah it's a good thing i guess for me but the rest of the world is like i i, I really look i love my audience i mean if i've got a few loves in my life and I love my audience, and that I really do. And I don't want you guys to worry yourselves to death. That's the last thing you need right now. But I don't want you to bury your head in the sand either. So we're in this kind of touchy area, you know, like where we need to stay in between and stay balanced. I mean, it is spiritual if you think about it, right? I mean, it really is. I don't know if I lost you there, Jeff. Did I lose no, you? No, you didn't right at all. No, I, I I agree with you totally. I I, I would say what what a, what the astronomy or astrology, however you want to call it, I think gives comfort for is will we get through this? The answer is yes. It looks like we will. Is there going to be a lot of damage? Probably. You know, I mean, let's face it. Some businesses are going to need help. They just can't keep paying the colossal expenses. Like I've had clients calling me, my God, we're paying unemployment. We're doing this. We've still got the uh, colossal electric bills and, you know, these businesses that are floating the ongoing expenses with no income coming in there. It's like someone just cut them off at the knees. You know, they, they can't even walk and it's pretty much that way. So we've got, you know, this is a tough time to get through. Will we get through it? Yes. And I think some businesses are probably going to have to, you know, close their doors or reconsolidate or get help, all of which can happen. I, I like what I'm hearing from a lot of the governors of you know, states and cities. Uh, I can tell you the the Beverly Hills has done some wonderful things at helping people. They're literally, they told everybody in California, we will not allow the electric company, the gas company, or the water company to shut off your utilities, even if you don't pay them. We won't allow them to do it until it's, it's been put off on hold, so to speak, until this summer, which is really, I think, some pretty great stuff. You know, that's how humanity ought to be anyhow, helping people out, you know? Yeah, yeah. If Whatever you can do to help people. I mean, it doesn't have to be uh, financially. It could be anything. It could The elderly especially, you know, we need to really look out for them because they're the ones that are getting, um, they're the ones that are most, they're so much more at risk, stuff, man. So we need to take care of them. Uh, and, yeah. and if you get sick, stay away from them. Even if you don't know what you got, if you got a cold or if it's allergies or whatever, you know, like stay away from them. I, I've never been so scared, man, for my father in my entire life. And he's diabetic and he's in his sixties. And, uh, you know, I got a teenage son who's wanting to take off running everywhere in the world. And, you know, he doesn't understand what's really going on right now. So I, I get that he doesn't understand because he don't watch the news man what does he do he plays Fortnite and stuff but but that's that's what we're dealing with on a day-to-day basis so i have to explain to him what's going on and you know which adds to more stress in the household so the best thing we can do is just be calm and relaxed and have fun you know once you're in your situation have fun there's all kinds of stuff to do and go outside and get yeah, the fresh and, air. and practically keep your supplies up. I mean, I think it's really wise to keep your supplies up. I think this is going to go on for a while. I, I don't think the dust settles again until really looks like things get up and running about the end of May. That's where I see it start to say, okay, you know, we can now open up the gates again and get moving. I think we're going to see the levels increase. Uh, probably all over the place. Uh, the astrology again has been right on. I'm just 
amazed at how accurate it's been uh, in terms of exciting this. It just exploded when the south node was conjuncted by Mars. Mars is actually going to cross Pluto literally here in another day or two. And that's powerful. And then it's going to conjunct Mars right at the end of this month. I would say those, whether we see it directly on the news or not, that's likely to stimulate things in a more intense way. And then I think we're going to see a peak if the astrology is right and start to see a leveling off and taper by about the third week, about the 22nd thereabouts when that lunar mansion shifts out of Ardra into the next nakshatra, which is also called a lunar mansion. But the Kalasarpa yoga doesn't break fully until May 27th. It breaks every two weeks with the moon. So we get a little, you know, the moon is a strange energy in Kalasarpa yogas because I've studied this a lot. The Kalasarpa yoga technically still exists, even though the moon is outside of it. It's mitigated, though. It's almost like the karmic energies during those times that the moon sweeps out and breaks it are actually commingling. The moon is really fascinating when you watch its effect in interrogation astrology and electional astrology. It's like a carrier. It's almost like a water carrier. It takes the aspects it makes and carries it through translation of spiritual light, if you will, to the other planets it makes aspects to. This new moon that happens on the 24th happens right during the full Kalasarpa Yoga and it is squaring both Rahu and Ketu in these very destructive nakshatras. So I always love to tell people, do a meditation and a prayer on the new moons. They're exceedingly powerful. See, that the metaphor for a new moon is planting new seeds for the next lunar month. And again, if anybody wants to know, it's right Pacific time, if you're in the West Coast, it'll be at 2.29 a.m. on March 24th. And if you're in the East Coast, it'll be like 5.30 a.m. or 5.29. If you do it right in and around there, I know that's kind of late, but um, or whenever you can, you'll find uh, prayers often have very powerful effects during the what we call the lunations because it plants a seed of etheric energy uh, that's very, very powerful. Many people who uh, uh, study this kind of stuff find that, um, in fact, in, in the Hebrew religion, uh, that's called Rosh Hodesh. Rosh means head, Hodesh means yeah. month. So it's, it's a very powerful time where uh, they say the 72 angels um, are, are very activated during the lunations, meaning the new moons. So uh, very powerful stuff to keep aware of and uh Man. I, I think meditation and prayer is good at any time but you that's guys will have to uh, particularly well you guys will have to forgive me and jeff with the connection here we've we've got it doesn't you know what's weird jeff is it doesn't show that my speed's bad it doesn't show your speed's bad i just think i can see our listenership is up it has been all week i just think everybody's on the dang internet right now like more than anything you know yeah it's probably taxed yeah it, it's it's it is taxed a little but now, as an astrologer, though, I know you're checking charts every day and stuff. When did you, when I, I'm just trying to figure out how early you saw something like this coming, right? Usually, when do you notice? About 10 years ago. Like <laughs> About 10 years ago. Really? <laughs> yeah, I just knew this was going to be a really trying time in the world. I, I knew it would be. I mean, every time Saturn and Pluto mix up on conjunctions, something major happens. It also happens on the squares and oppositions. Those are the hard aspects. And the, you know, I saw the Kalasarpa Yoga coming and I'm just scratching my head going, Eesh, this is going to be intense. It always is when they get in these nakshatras. I mean, if you go back, um, it, the lunar mansions, <clears throat> now there wasn't a Kalasarpa Yoga during 9-11, but interestingly enough, the moon's north and south node were in those nakshatras during 9-11. They were also in those nakshatras with Kennedy. I think uh, if we go back, there was something with the Korean War, or I think it was somewhere around in there. Um, the Kennedy assassination, that happened. And also uh, the bombing of Hiroshima. If you keep going back farther, there's always 
heavy points that happen. These are these are very destructive. Again, Mula is the god of destruction. It really, truly is. It's um, in if anyone's familiar with the ancient Vedantic terminology, there's something. It's kind of a strange word called gunas. Gunas are, if you will, kind of the um, philosophy or qualities of life. So you have a number of different definitions, but one of them in particular is uh, sattvas, which which are are very um, pleasant and good and constructive. And then you have rajas, which is kind of um, also, you, you could say, related to inertias uh, and also kind of a, a flip of dullness. But the one that's most problematic is the, what we call the tamasic type. And that's what these lunar mansions are. Tamasic means destructive. It's kind of God's way of saying, okay, we're going to like, just like the end of the year, winter destroys the crop from last year. It, it's everything, the leaves decay, right? We, we see the life force get these destroyed in some senses, if you will, even though the trees aren't. But then it's a rejuvenational process through that destruction, that decay and the mulching of the soil and the plants and the leaves and all that actually fertilize the soil for new growth. And that's what these nakshaktras are kind of like. They destroy or they take away. But through that, the recycling is receded. And that seems to be the nature of creation. Everything on this planet starts out as a seed or an embryo. It grows, it matures, it atrophies, and it dies. And then it recycles, reseeds. It's, you know, any quantum physicist will tell you everything on this planet that we know of is literally vibrating energy. It's made up of electrical divine etheric energy and of course we call them atoms and molecules in physics but uh when you start getting into the the upper realms there's what the bible refers to as waters waters are the etheric angelic forces that bind all this together and keep it in order and these nakshatras these lunar mansions that we're in right now have that effect of a cleansing or a transformational effect. And they're, they're exceedingly powerful. So I, I can't minimize this. And, um, yeah. but on the other hand, look at what's we're staring at here in the next couple of years, the, this Saturn Jupiter conjunction hasn't happened quite like it is uh, in 240 years, this is called a mutation conjunction. The last time this happened was the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. I mean, if you think back, what people have gone through, what the world has gone through, look at the world wars and you look at the famines. There was a huge famine right after the last Saturn-Pluto conjunction in World War I. There was a huge epidemic. A lot more people I think the reason not as many people will die from this one is because of technology, because of the news and the internet and people heeding it. You know, just think if this was 1914 and everybody didn't have a cell phone or a TV or an internet, we're just, Hey bud, let's get together. Yeah. yeah. You know, so we can communicate a lot faster. That's, that's a good point. Like we can, well, and technology allows us to overcome. Look at, People are running around in cars right now, isolated from contact with others. We have our homes that have almost everything we need from microwaves, you know, uh, heaters, you know, and and air conditioners. We have our our showers and all all the things we have, our ability to cook, unlike you could 100 years ago. You still did that 100 years ago, but not like now. Very good point. Uh, I got to, I do have a few questions i'm going to ask you jeff when we come back i've seen a couple in the chat room too you can also text in at 501 if you can support the show please do so we can sure use it keep us on the air i know it's red alert for everybody right so let's all help each other the best way we can we'll, we'll be right back with jeff Harmon. This is Rev. Dan Lopez from Spiritual Warrior Today Radio, and you're listening to KTLK, The Fringe FM. Get the t- 
tea is the number one cleansing tea in America. We cleanse you with organic ingredients, and when used daily, you can increase your energy. Cleanse from intruders that set up camp in your colon. Cleanse your colon and feel the difference. Colon cleanses can be uncomfortable. Not Life Change Tea at GetTheTea.com. Life Change Tea is mild yet truly effective. Cleanse your insides every day. Easy to make, easy to use, and feel the results. Here's how to order. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Look for our specials on the front page. Get the Tea also carries top-rated supplements for those who care about their health naturally. Again, log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. And feel the results. And for those of you that arm yourself with information, come to our webinar every other Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. That's every other Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific. You can sign up at GetTheTea.com. So you love talk radio. Then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on 24-7 with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier just go to talkstreamlive.com be sure to download the free apps from google play or the itunes app store hi this is david Oman with house at the end of the drive.com you're listening to kplk the fringe fm Do you want to know the truth? Are UFOs real? Are aliens visiting Earth? Are governments around the world hiding the biggest secret in history? We're UFO Seekers, official partner of The Fringe FM, and we're on a hunt for the truth. Join us as we investigate locations like Area 51 by subscribing on YouTube at youtube.com slash UFO Seekers. Hi, this is Kronox from Belgium, and you're listening to Lighting the Void with Joe Roop. Hey, friends, FM listeners. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or no Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of the Fringe FM by calling 701-719-3971. No smartphone, app, or Internet needed. Saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Call 701-719-3971. That's 701-719-3971. Listen to the Fringe FM on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Alex Exum. Exum. This is Alex Exum of the Exum Experience and Live Talk, where we discuss current events, society, and culture. My shows are based in actuality, actual existence, contrasted with what was intended, expected, or believed. You can listen to me live Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at 7 p.m. only on KTLK The Fringe FM. Okay, nurse, let's get this man to the ER stat. Right away, doctor. We see this every day. Heart attack or angina pain due to blocked and clogged arteries. Chelation can remove obstructions or blockages from arteries and help avoid painful and expensive surgery. Now there's Angioprim. It's a liquid oral chelation product that you take with juice. You start to feel the results fast. Angioprim increases blood flow all over the body, and that means more energy and strength to take on the day with less aches and pains. 60 years of research has gone into chelation, and angioprim is the result. A safe and easy way to unblock your veins and arteries from buildup that slow circulation. Paging Dr. Jones, please report to the emergency room right away. Log on now to angioprim.com. That's A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M.com. Or to speak with a trained consultant, give angioprim a call at 954-882-7221. That's 954-882-7221. This is Reverend John M. Polk, and you are listening to KTLK Digital Broadcasting right here on the Fringe.fm. All right, Jeff Farman's our guest tonight. Look, uh, the 1 800 number is not working. I just tested it, but you can call in at five on the old number, 501 777 5631. That's the number you want to use to call in, 501-777-5631, 501-777-5631. Uh, 
Jeff, man, I really do appreciate you coming on and talking about this because it's like, uh, you know, everybody's wanting to hear what you got to say about it. And I'm sure people lean on other astrologers and stuff too, but doesn't that kind of, kind of uh, get you a little nervous about that, you know, because you don't want to tell people the bad news and everybody wants to know? I mean, how do you deal with that? Well, it, it is. Um, it, you know, that's one of the reasons I've been actually keeping quiet. You're the first radio show I've actually spoken about. And even Camille's like, Jeff, you know, everybody's calling, everybody's asking. Every day I'm doing sessions with clients and I'm certainly telling them what I'm telling you um, in their in their readings. But, you know, this is the first time I've actually stepped out on any broadcast in the last three, four weeks, other than your last one, to talk about this. And the reason why is I don't want to create panic. Um, I really think we're going to get through this, but I also think this is a very, very severe problem. And the again, the astrology, I, I like to create awareness rather than fear and the awareness I would say like like I was talking to a guy who was very advanced in the military just recently and he says you know that's what we do he says we face the problem square on we assess our conditions and he says the more we know exactly where we're at where our capabilities are and what our capabilities aren't he says the better job we do and that's really intelligent if you talk to anybody in police or a paramedic or fire they're the same way they're trained in that stuff and in a way we got to take something from those very knowledgeable people and that is, you know, anything you can get that's informative, that helps you cope better. And I think you said it best, Joe, before a lot of people are really freaking out and they're nervous. And I have to say, even myself, I'm going, wow, you know, this is really, really intense. And I knew it would be, I, I knew this would be, I, for the last 10 years, I've been saying it. I don't think the world's going to end. I think we're just in a very big time of transformation. And again, these two lunar mansions, every time they couple up, they cause trouble, but they cause more trouble or the consequences of what they cause are much deeper. And you could say changing of society in the world. When you have this confluence of all these things, the Saturn Pluto conjunction, the Kalasarpa yoga, the two lunar mansions that these are in right now. In fact, again, the South node is going to be in this all the way up until September. So um, this is very powerful stuff. See, that's another reason I don't think Trump is going to be as affected as much is because when Trump has his lunar returns, these nakshatras aren't happening anymore. It's it's happening in better nakshatras. They're not so tamasic like this. So what's good is um, we're going to get through this. And again, I would say we all need to fare as best as we can and keep healthy. And I think by the end of this year, particularly uh, as we get into the winter solstice, we're going to find 2021 through 2024 are going to be changes unlike we've never seen before. I think we're going to see this global currency reset that everyone's been talking about for many years. I think they're now at a crisis point where they've absolutely are going to have to come up with solutions that they've been talking about for a long time, but haven't acted on. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of small businesses have a tough time. Um, if they're strong enough to weather it until this summer by whatever means, by help, by aid, by um, innovative and creative thinking, they're probably going to find everything's going to come back. I, I really do. I, I think once we start getting into summer, the wheels are going to come back. Uh, they're going to start turning again. But I think what's happened right now, it's it's uh, exactly how the astrology has said. It's just been a total, almost complete meltdown. I'm glad that we haven't had any major earthquakes. I'm really grateful that there hasn't been any major military outbreaks in the Middle East, and I hope it stays that way. <clears throat> that could still happen. Um, what's good about this pandemic is maybe it's going to make everybody say, you know, we're too sick or too worried to go fight. That would be a nice concept. God, yeah, it would be nice, war, right? And, I mean, the, yeah. everybody just uh, stop fighting for, for once and just, 
you know, relax and get along. <laughs> That'd be nice, right? It would be. But my, my we favorite also gotta scene. Wonder if we're getting the truth too, Jeff. I mean, I don't like to. Well, I think as far as this not. virus, we are. I, I think we are. Do you really believe that China's numbers are declining like they say they are, though? I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. I, I, I tell you, uh, I have the chart of China when, see, China is such an old, old country. But the, when China took over in 1949, uh, the communist regime took over. That that I do have. And I, I'd have to say they got some really hard aspects coming on right now. I think this is going to severely affect their ability to become the dominant world power like they were planning on doing. I think this has really thrown a curveball in them. And I think it's going to forever change China's power structures um, for a couple of reasons. One, look at the U.S. The U.S. is now finally, all the politicians that sold us down the river are going, geez, you know, you're right. We don't have any manufacturing here that covers basic essential needs. We were dependent. I mean, if you look around the room in most people's homes, you can't find anything that doesn't have made in China on it. Yeah, I that's mean, the problem. We, that's a problem. Yeah. And, so, you know, people say, well, geez, we can't afford to do manufacturing here. Oh, yes, we can if we start becoming innovative with new technologies. And I think the United States and the, the United States chart shows this. It's going to take time. It's not going to happen in five minutes. But what I like is is the innovative way that at least this administration's thinking, even though a lot of people hate them, they can sit there and stare into the cameras all they want and paint hate, but hate isn't going to get us anywhere. What I like is innovative thinking and forward thinking. If people start getting creative, I know years ago I was going to do a huge manufacturing uh, project that I had uh, patents on. And we actually looked at going to China and Mexico to, to get our costs down, when we did the numbers on the kind of numbers we were talking about, it was smarter to stay right here in the good old USA and do it in automated manufacturing. And I think that's, um, I actually years ago went out with the daughter of the president of Snap-on Tools, and he was an interesting guy. He told me, he said, Jeff, he said, I'm going to tell you something. He said, in the next 30 years, he said, all these factories we got are going to become automated. He said, where we had 500, 300 people, there's now going to be 10 or 20 people, but they're going to be highly skilled, well-paid, and we're still going to have a lot of people working there, but not like the old way. And we're seeing this happen all over the place. Human nature is, is, is always to be too fearful. I, I think, um, yeah. I, I think this might be a blessing in disguise in some ways, even though we certainly don't feel that way now. And, uh, but it might be because it's a wake up call to say, Hey, you know, yeah, we can go to Walmart and pick something up for, you know, under a buck. But, um, you know, one thing about China, we always had a joke when we bought tools from China, made in China. We said, well, okay, they're cheap, but we can buy three of them. So yeah, we'll throw away right. the first two when they break. <laughs> well, I mean, look, it's, it's a, it's a good thing to learn. It's a good thing to learn stuff, right? I mean, when you go through hard times like this, you learn what you don't, you, you just, hopefully, I'm not saying yeah, the human race does up. the best thing about learning from our past because a lot of times we don't but in big cases we do you know and hopefully we'll learn from this and uh yep. grow from it i mean that's all we that's all you can do and you know well, the more we're, we're going to transform from it is what it shows yeah. uh, through the destruction of this situation we're going to transform and ultimately change and come out in a better way and i think one of the things that's disturbed me that's so divisive in this country is we have seen ever since this last election. Now, whether you like Trump or hate Trump, I'm not here to sell anybody on Trump or get anybody to hate Trump. I'm just saying it's, this is actually a unification in some ways where people will stop, you know, screaming at each other and start figuring out ways to help each other because nothing has been productive the last three years, like it should have been, had, had everyone been more working together. And um, uh, I mean, the hate I see is just ridiculous. I mean, it's just, well, you know, I, I've got hate mail that. for saying anything good about Trump. Hate mail. The 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 one thing I have no, noticed about astrology is this, 
the, these cycles that happen, right? And these cycles yep. and these forces and energies that happen that, that are putting pressure on us to grow spiritually, right? I mean, that, you've talked to yep. me about that before. It's something that you noticed and, uh, yeah, now we're doing it as a society and hopefully we'll learn from, hopefully we'll evolve from it. I think we will. Yep. I mean, if the chart well, show, we, one we of the probably things, will. Well, and you're bringing up a good point. One of the things I always spend a lot of time when I do readings for people is talking about how modern astrology, even though it has its virtues, is love, light, and cluelessness. Everyone has this pop astrology. Everyone thinks they're Capricorns and Pisces and whatever their sun sign. That There isn't a person on the planet that doesn't know their sun sign. And I can tell you that is love, light, and clueless astrology. The love and light part's great, but but it's not accurate. If you look in Vedic astrology, the sidereal zodiac usually proves that you're a different sun sign. Not always, but usually there's a 24-degree difference. It's called the precession of the equinoxes. And what I love about these ancient texts, because I don't just study astrology, I really like studying about the soul. Who the heck are we? What is astrology and what isn't astrology? Astrology is not us. Everyone thinks it predicts the future. And even, you know, someone listening to me on this radio broadcast and I might say, well, oh, he's predicting the future. You know? No, I'm not. I'm just saying it's astronomy. It's really the astronomy of the soul. And you know, for the people who want to beat the, the devil drum, oh, it's the work of the devil, the astrology. No, it's not. It's actually in the biblical scriptures. It's particularly mm -hmm. in the Psalms. It talks about how the heavens declare, how they work on the souls. Well, if they were looking into some of the ancient texts, they would actually see that we are not our astrology. Our soul comes hundreds of dimensions above astrology. It's where it's created. The heavens are literally what I call the karmic matrix we enter in through to incarnate on this amazing planet. And it's a purification and rectification process. You know, light, the world's not put here to make us all happy and feel good, even though it does that a lot. It's also put here to make us grow, to make us maybe transform and purify some of the negative elements in us. There's, there's overwhelming evidence that there are many other places like Earth, not only in astronomy, but it's referred to in the Vedantic and in the ancient Kabbalistic scriptures, and that we will all come here and purify and rectify until we get to a point where we transmute and move on. And um, that's what I think we got to look at this. We're all spiritual beings having a physical experience, even though the world blocks us from that so much. There's an ancient legend that the soul is tied to the body at first breath, <clears throat> but it's actually attached to the embryo at conception. And the angel makes a mark between our nose and our upper lip right when we are born when we come out <clears throat> that mark is made to make us forget so we can't remember previous incarnations you know channels and such might be able to get glimpses at things and past life regressions but overall we're blocked this is a very real game down here and what i like about the show tonight <clears throat> is it shows this isn't the end of the world it's just a major turning point um, I think the coronavirus is a part of that. And whether we can talk about conspiracy theories or not, it doesn't matter. The bottom line is it's here. Um, and I think its severity would be a lot worse if the actions in modern society weren't being taken like they, they are. The good news is I think uh, it's going to subside like all great plagues. Look at the, the Black Plague in Europe. I mean, so many people died. I mean, they were burying people constantly. Yeah. I mean, when you look at the numbers on this, yeah, there's a lot of people infected with it, but there's also a lot of people healing from it. They come out of it. And these are people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. They're like they're saying, it's usually the people who are very old or they have pre-existing conditions. There are a lot of young people dying too. But um, when you look at the common flu, I mean, thousands of people die every year from the flu, especially older people. I think there's the numbers are like 35,000. I mean, this could hit that easy, but I think it's going to be a lot less because of all the actions being taken. 
And again, what I like, and when, when people say, okay, what did I get out of listening to this broadcast? I would say the astrology shows it's going to probably get bigger numbers um, and stronger, but I think it's going to start to subside when this Kalasarpa yoga breaks and the wheels of society will get back up and get churning. And I think they're going to come out with a bang. And, and when probably this summer, I would say June through the fall, things should really be back up and running. Or is it, and we pick it, up the pieces. Are, are people uh, during times of crisis like this, do they tend to, do you get busier? Like and during these times, as far as clients go and stuff, I yeah I do because a lot of people panic. Um, and you know, on that, I wanted to say, you know, I, I will again continue a discount. If you mentioned Joe Roop's show and this show, I will definitely give you a discount because I know these are hard times for everybody, and I'm happy to do that. And Camille, I'll, I'll share that with you. I forget what she did last time, but she'll continue that as well because you know I want to contribute too. It gives me great pleasure to help people not be, no, I just had a, a poor lady had horrible things happen with that storm up in Montana and, you know, everything's coming down on everybody. And, you know, we, we all panic, you know, and I have to say, looking at the cycles in my own life, um, it's really been helpful because again, you can't stop these. These are energies as it is. It is not predicting the future. It's energies. Any, physicists will tell you if you have it's it's like newton said reaction reaction or you know action reaction right so um you know these are forces is what they are i think when you add in the factor of consciousness and awareness and and spirituality that's what makes a difference it's that's what they teach you in martial arts is it's how you react to an aggressive energy or any kind of energy which dictates how you fare when you come out of it. You see? Yeah. So if you act with fear, if you act with anger, you're likely to make some very irrational decisions. If you act more with calmness and awareness uh, and arm yourself with real knowledge, you're, you're probably going to act a lot more intelligently than you would have otherwise. Yeah. And I just uh, got through, and that's like Gurdjieff stuff too. I just got through talking to my son about that today, you know? Uh, I had a conversation with him and he's a teenager, right? And he says, well, you know, well, when we, when you say this, you make me feel this way. And I said, ah, so here's the thing. Uh, you might misunderstand what I'm saying, but nobody can make you do anything. When you react to it is, is your responsibility. doesn't mean stuff doesn't hurt. It doesn't mean stuff's not hard, but it's at the end of the day, if you react to everything I say and everything I do and you become reactive, then I'm pretty much your master and you're not a master of yourself, are you? And he was like, well, I never thought of it that way. And I'm thinking, well, that's, that's what I think we're all here to learn. You know, I agree. I agree with that. That's, that's really great advice. It don't make it easy. though. No, it doesn't make it easier, but it does make it more rational. And that's the key right there. You know, when hard times come like this, um, it makes us grow. It really does. It, it makes us grow and it, it makes us become more aware of our um, kind of, you, you could say mortality, yeah. you know, I mean, you know, it, it, this is what happens every time we lose a loved one or we lose a pet or some something or someone we really love time kind of stops and crises is, is I think it's kind of God's way or a divine way of saying, Hey, you know, back up take a look at where you're at. Um, These destructive energies may ultimately in years to come be blessings because it's always the ebbs and flows. It's just like the sea. It's constantly ebbing and flowing. And sometimes it gets really intense and erodes the shore away. And then we have to come back in and fill it back in with rocks, you know, however, what analogies you want to use. And, And right now we're at a major turning point. Um, the last time I Saturn, um, Jupiter conjunction happened like this. And by the way, I'm using tropical astrology in that. Um, really? in that, yeah. Yeah. I, I find people who don't use both systems lose something. I love Vedic astrology. I'm immersed into it. Jaimini and Parashara and Tajika, all these different branches of Vedic astrology are, are fascinating to me. And, and I think no one could ever live long enough to understand them fully. And, 
But I love also the tropical systems. Why? Because no one can deny that today the spring equinox happened, the summer solstice will come, the fall equinox and the winter solstice. They set our seasons. So the tropical zodiac is actually the one closer to the earth. So I find using the techniques from both ancient systems is a superior look into things. That that's why, you know, when you look at no matter which systems you use, um, they they complement one another. You just have to use each respective systems in their own right. You can't blend them. You you have to treat each yeah. analysis. You know, I mean, so we've why. had this discussion before too. It gets confusing, right? Because people say, oh, you know, what exceedingly if, confusing. What signs am I? If I'm one thing on one chart and one thing on another chart, uh, you know, it's like don't know don't know what I am. But it's kind of funny. Like if you read well, both stories, that, that's I love that. I love that you just brought that up because I'll tell you who we are. We are spiritual beings having a physical experience. We ain't our astrology. We may exhibit traits like that, but that's pretty trite. I mean, if you lined up every Aries and Pisces and sun sign in the world side by side, looked them in the eye, there ain't a single one of them the same. And that's why I love Vedic astrology and, and tropical. See, tropical is amazing for looking at transits, progressions, and things like that. But Vedic astrology is profound at looking at elements of the soul, the doshas. There's, there's like 40 different dasha systems in Vedic astrology. And most of them have been lost, but the ones that we have intact, like the Jaimini astrology, the Parashara astrology, and some of the other naughty stuff is profound. It's breathtaking. And I've been blessed to study with people who really knew it. Uh, most of them are gone now. Like Chakrapani, I used to go out to dinner with him. A guy, we'd have great conversations. Chakrapani, of course, he came from India and his father and his grandfather and, you know, it goes back forever. And uh, these people lived you know, hundreds, possibly longer uh, of generational hand-me-down astrologers. So there's things that a lot of the modern Vedic books, they don't have. You can't just run over there and study Hindi and Sanskrit and then write a book easily. Though some have done some great jobs. Like there are certain Vedic astrology books I, I really think are wonderful, like Light on Life by Heart to Foe, uh, solid text. Um, you know, he went over there and, and you know, him and David Sabovda, they, they did a great job. So I'm, I'm not here to bash anyone, but I find there's things that you learn from masters. You, you know, it's like any field. You, you can go to college and learn something, but you're never going to really know what you're doing until you get out and work with a master who's been doing it. You know, that's when you get in the trenches and actually see how it's done and apply real life things to it. That's that's when you get good. Again, that's why I like that the apprentice program was in, instituted in the United States again. You know, I mean, most of the great carpenters I've met and tradesmen, they never went to school for it. They learned it from other masters, hand-me-downs. Look at the great cathedrals in Europe and the architecture. I mean, today, architecture is boring. If you start looking at the old buildings, oh, my God, they're, they're so classic. I mean, just look at Europe and, and look at some of the older stuff built in this country. Look at New York, some of these Gothic buildings and the Art Deco in, in downtown Los Angeles. It's breathtaking. You know, look at a house from 1920. So th this is what I mean. It's, it's the same thing in astrology. If you, if you learn from people who really knew the, the traditions and the techniques that are hard to put in books, you know, you, you really well, get a lot from it. I do. And that's why we appreciate you coming on here and giving us these reports. I mean, you've been doing this stuff since, you know, like the beginning. So I, I really appreciate it. You know, this oh, I appreciate a it big too. help. Yeah. It, it's the first time I've shared any, anything publicly about this and I've been keeping quiet because I don't like to contribute fear and panic. And, and I, I would say everybody knows now what's going on and I'm, I'm hope that I'm correct, and I'll bet the astronomy is we're going to see this thing subside. And I think it really subsides right after the 27th of May. I think we're going to see a, a leveling off, a peaking between now and April. It's going to look crazy. But I think what's comforting is I, I couldn't believe how accurate 
the uh, Mars transiting that south node was. Um, my suspicion is this um, lunar nakshatra actually started last fall. I think this thing might have been incubating over in China a lot longer than they said. And I peaked out somewhere in December. That's what I think. And then really became publicly acknowledged in January on the Saturn-Pluto conjunction because that nakshatra of um, Ardra actually kicked in way back at the beginning of, at the end of September, beginning of October. Well, you know what? I, I, would, uh, I don't know what to say. I, I'm glad that your report isn't as scary as I thought it was going to be. Cause I got to tell you when I started the show, Jeff didn't really tell me anything. He just said, you know, I'm going to do this on your show because people are asking for it. And I'm glad that it's, I'm hoping that you're right. I'm hoping the charts are right. Usually they are when you Me talk too. about it. So <laughs> Me um, too. I'm I'm not God. I'm just reading the chart. And if I'm interpreting this right, we're going to see it increase, level off, and start to get under control as we move into uh, May, into summer. I, I think it's going to taper off. And life is going to change. I mean, this is going to leave an indelible effect. Look at 9-11 did. I mean, I remember back in the 70s and 80s and 90s, man, I could run through the airport, jump on a plane and and just go, you know, right, right as the door was closing. You can't do that now. After, after 9-11, so many things changed on so many levels. And this is going to have a, an effect on that, too. It really is. I think we're going to see um, a lot of positive change and also a lot of financial changes because of this. This is going to be really expensive. I mean, never before. Has society been shut down like it has? Think about that. Not like this. Not in modern times. This is pretty colossal. Well, I hope, I hope we're all I hope we're all ready for this. I hope we can all take care of each other. But I'll tell you what, the good news is, is you can get your personal reading, right? You go to jeffharmon.com, get 20% off. All you got to do is say you, uh, you heard Jeff on Lighting the Void. People are taking advantage of that. So that's good. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm really generous with my time. You know, it, it, this affects everyone different. You know, I, I've had so many people, particularly business people, because I have a lot of business clients and they're all panicking. They're like, oh, my God, you know, the water levels up to my nostrils. And this was the last thing I needed is now to have my business shut down. They're either already in debt or they had a huge overhead or were doing something. And now this comes in. I mean, you feel like you know, you're on the Titanic and the only thing, you know, difference is the Titanic had good music when it went down. So it's really tough for people. And, um, but I think we're going to get through it. I, I think if we can find any innovative ways, people start showing compassion, not only just brotherly love, but I'm saying like compassion, like helping people out in any way they can financially, giving them a break, letting them, you know, uh, that's what they're being forced to do here in California. I've heard literally the, the uh, mayor of Beverly Hills, as well as in Southern California, they've said we're postponing any shutoff of utilities. And I've heard that they're talking about uh, leniency on rent until and uh, leases up until um, summer well yeah that's good news to me the the LA county court system just put everything on hold until well into june i think it's good it's good news to me i want to see what we can do without our government that's what i want to see just for once i just want to see what we're capable of i mean of course they're going to bail us out and all that stuff but you know what i mean we're just kind of dependable beings and now we got to depend on each other and i'm kind of curious to see how that goes down you know, so. Well, we just stuck $2.2 trillion into upgrading the military in the last few years. Jeez, how much money would it take to give everybody a little break? I bet it wouldn't cost that much. And yeah. they're already talking about doing it. Yeah, right. So, yeah, you got a, you know. you got a point. Listen, uh, I know I, I got to let you go here, Jeff, because I know it's getting late for you. But, man, yes, thank you yeah, for coming on and uh, giving us that you report. And, yeah, um, absolutely. You guys go check out jeffharmon.com. That's the website, jeffharmon.com, and book a reading, and Camille will hook you up, and and uh, you'll get a discount. And I uh, hope to have you back soon, brother. You bet. And everybody stay strong. We will get through this. You know, it's it's crazy. It's not going to be easy, but we will get through it. And I, I love that the chart says brighter days are coming, and we just got to get into, you know, those, those periods. And I think this summer it's going to start to turn. 
Fantastic. Yeah, thanks for the update, right, Jeff. Really care. appreciate it. You bet. Thanks, Joe. Take care now. All right, guys, that's it. That will be uh We'll be right back. That's it for Jeff anyways, but we'll be right back. More Lighting the Void coming up. Some final thoughts uh, as well. I think somebody's ringing in on the phone. Look at that. Here we go. We'll be right back. In your face, all over the place. We're online 24 7. 24 7. You're listening to the hottest internet station. Listen, I want to tell you about GI Joy from GetTheTea.com. It's the best alchemical concoction of goodies for your stomach and digestive system I can recommend, and that's all based on my experience. Packed with colostrum, acidophilus, aloe, peppermint, and turmeric. If you do your own research, then you know this is the bee's knees for the stomach and digestion. Now, due to Big Brother's ears and the eye in the sky, you know I can't go into the details about what it helped me with. All I can say is, I got relief. It's non-GMO, no fillers, no preservatives, manufactured right here in the U.S. of A., and delivered to you by the only people who stay on top of the game and are out in front. Go grab a bottle of G.I. Joy at GetTheTea.com and see what all the fuss is about. Again, that's GetTheTea.com. AncientLifeOil.com. For your CBD needs, just remember, AncientLifeOil.com. What does it do for the body, you ask? I can't say do the people in the suits that run the industry. Big Farm is all over CBD because of its H-E, well, you know what I mean. Research the benefits of CBD on Google and come back to AncientLifeOil.com and purchase your CBD today non-GMO, and all organic. You don't want to be using a petroleum product. You want to be using the cleanest CBD product on the market, ancientlifeoil.com. We even have CBD for your pet. Help your pet's discomfort. Help your discomfort. Log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. Newly reduced prices to pass off the savings to the most important person, you, ancientlifeoil.com. And one more thing, we have topicals too. So if you have joint pain and some different issues that are going on in your body, you might want to use a topical. Think about it. Ancientlifeoil.com. Hi, this is Aaron Hunter, host of Real Paranormal Activity, the podcast where we tell real paranormal experiences of people from around the world. And we also conduct interviews with authors, investigators, psychics, and mediums. Real people. Real stories, real fear. Thursdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern on The Fringe FM. See you then. My name is Jake. I'm from Billings, Montana, and I am a Floyd Walker. Hey, Joe Root. Thanks for lighting the void. This is Janine in the bluegrass of Kentucky, and I am a Void Walker. What's up, guys? This is Daniel from San Marcos, Texas, and I'm a Void Walker. I listen to the show to keep myself aligned with the world. Hi, this is Laura, a.k.a. Laura Lavender. I'm from Las Vegas, and I listen to Lighting the Void because it helps me understand some of the strangest experiences I've had. So thanks for all that you do and for always being there for us, Joe. You can tug all day long on a carpet that's been glued to the floor. Then you hurt. There are many strong glues out there. Let's see. There's liquid nails and Gorilla Glue. You ever try to remove 3M5200? That adhesive is strong. Then there's bathroom caulk, silicone rubber, adhesive tape, super glue, flex tape, and stickers. Graffiti. Scientists have come up with glues that stay stuck and can't be removed. Until now. Until Handyman Formula by DeBond. That's right. 95% of adhesives become unstuck when you spray Handyman Formula directly on them. Just spray, wait a few minutes, and remove. It's amazing. Most adhesives become unstuck when you use Handyman Formula. Visit DeBondCorporation.com or MCMaster.com. Call 561-575-4200. This stuff really works. Handyman Formula by DeBond, a great Christmas gift. 
ever seen an extraterrestrial? It can be hard to believe they exist unless you've seen one for yourself. What if I told you I've seen them my whole life but have never had a witness who shared the encounter with me? Now, what if I told you I saw four of them, two with blue skin, and there are over 20 witnesses to this CE5 event? My new book, The Blue Beings, Visitation at the UFO Conference, documents actual accounts from real witnesses, many of which have gone on record to attest to this otherworldly reality. Be a part of the quantum paradigm shift that is taking place right now. Go to johnpolkmedia.com to get your copy of the Blue Beans Visitation at the UFO Conference on sale right now at johnpolkmedia.com. That's J-O-H-N-P-O-L-K media.com. This is the Rogie Report News on the Fringe FM. I'm Jess Rogie. The U.S. Health and Human Service Department suffered a cyber attack as part of a campaign of disruption and disinformation aimed at undermining the country's response to an ongoing coronavirus outbreak. A spokesman for the National Security Council provided more information on the attack in a statement saying, We are aware of the cyber incident related to the Health and Human Services computer networks, and the federal government is investigating this incident thoroughly. HHS and federal government cybersecurity professionals are continuously monitoring and taking appropriate actions to secure our federal networks. HHS and federal networks are currently functioning normally. A team of astronomers have located 139 new trans-Neptunian objects, which are sun-orbiting celestial bodies that are out past Neptune in the Kuiper Belt. The team observed over 300 trans-Neptunian objects, 139 of those which were completely new discoveries. The findings could also leave scientists to the mysterious Planet Nine, a hypothetical large planet that some astronomers believe orbits the Sun from the most distant reaches of the solar system. A handful of astronomers believe that Planet Nine might actually be a black hole. In a video shared by Tales From Out There on YouTube, a triangle-shaped UFO was spotted over the skies of Chicago. The footage shows a camera panning to some high-rise buildings into a cloudy night sky. The two women recording can be heard trying to work out what they're seeing. Government propaganda so we don't learn about aliens. A reflection of what? That's not what it looks like, though. It doesn't. There's no events going on that would be like a light like that. I am trying to... The witness later explained that she and her friend both thought the object was a plane at first. Similar crafts were spotted in Texas earlier this year. An unusual petroglyph was discovered in central Iran. The prehistoric rock depicts a six-legged figure that appears to be inspired by the praying mantis. Archaeologists and entomologists teamed up to analyze the petroglyph. Their study suggests the figure may be a combination of a praying mantis and a human. The scientists estimate the Iranian carving could be anywhere from 4,000 to 40,000 years old. Based on the depiction of the insect, entomologists believe the mantis most likely belonged to a local species called Empusa, also known as the Conehead Mantis. This is the Rogie Report News on the Fringe FM. I'm Jess Rogie. thank Jeff Harmon uh, for coming out and giving us that report, that astrological report. That was very, very interesting. It's a better report than I thought it was going to be because uh, from the talks of everything, um, it's like, it's kind of like when you, you get on the internet and you try to find some type of relief for your bad situation. You never can. You get into chat rooms and stuff and there's a lot of fear mongering going on, but there's also a lot of facts too. I, I Honestly, where I go online, to look up the facts about what's going on as I just go to the CDC and look, look at the numbers and that's it. Cause it's, I have a hard time trusting Fox, MSNBC, the drudge report. I have a hard time trusting it. I trust Rogie and night stalker though. Um, but it's, it's a good time right now to 
I guess what I'm going to say, because I don't want to rant again like I did last week. So I guess what I'm going to say about this is, is we have become entirely too dependent on all the systems that we have in our life that's been set up for us for instant gratification. And now we're kind of seeing um, what goes on when that happens. You know, everybody goes to the store and buys everything out, which is understandable. But then what are you going to do when that runs out? He's just going to sit and worry about stuff and sit in your fear, and that's no good. Um, but the cool thing is, I mean, it's, you know, you got the Internet. You can learn how to do anything. You can learn how to homestead if you want. You can learn how to hunt, fish. I mean, it might be a good time while you're doing this stuff to learn a few survival skills and community skills and how to take care of people and just see for once, just for once, it would be nice to see what we can do without the federal government. Although I'm pretty sure I'm going to take that check too if when they hand it to me. But I mean, what, realistically, if we can't go to the store and spend it on anything, what what's it good for? Because I'm telling you now, in Arkansas, I thought this was the last place that would actually, I don't know, have a huge breakout here. But we've got like 50 or 60 cases so the in Little Rock, but the percentage rate is spreading. It's still spreading just as fast. And the hardest thing that I've had by far, and this is just my scenario, my case here with this whole coronavirus thing, it's not social distancing. I'm that's the life I live, you know. Anyways, it's not uh, getting stuff from the store. It's not food or drink. It's trying to get people to understand that if you're sick to stay home and stay away from people. And it's not like, I mean, like I get it. You got to work, right? But that's what the government's going to try to do. They're going to try to help you out. If you need help, this might be one of those times where you have to swallow your pride a little bit and reach out to somebody and ask for help. That's better, honestly, than going to work, getting somebody sick, which you don't really see. Well, if I get this person sick, it's no big deal. But then that person carries it to somebody's grandma or a parent or something like that, and they die needlessly. And that's happening by an alarming rate. And all I'm, I guess what I'm saying is I'm a little frustrated at how people are that way. I understand that you have to work, right? I understand that you need to pay your bills. But everybody is doing whatever they can to make sure that you don't lose your house and all this other stuff while this is going on. But you got to weigh the options here, folks. Like, is it worth killing people for? I mean, I went to the store the other day, and this guy had pneumonia behind the counter. You know what I mean? Looked, he looked like he was on his deathbed. What is he doing up there? Why are you guys, why are people letting him come to work? And the guy that runs the place, you know, he's a, he's got money out the wazoo. He can give the, he can give the guy a couple of weeks of checks or something or loaning the money. It, it's just not worth killing people. That's all I'm saying. Cause I'm going to, I'm going to get upset here in a minute if I keep, keep on ranting. Um, but what we are going to do though, for the rest of the night, and we're going to kind of end this in the week right here is, uh, wrap this up. I'm going to just play just for the fun of it, just to kind of like a fun joke, how the world will end by Clyde Lewis, his podcast. And then, uh, we're going to get out of here. Now, next week on the program, just to let you guys know, uh, Max Egan will be here. The New Moon with Mary show is going to be here as well. Rex Bear from the Leak Project and Next NEXT will be back on the program. And then we also have, uh, uh, I think, a mystery guest on the one day. So, yeah, I mean, I think... I think that was just before I roll out of here too. I was just going to say, I think that's one of the biggest things that I've had troubles with is trying to understand why people would risk other people's lives like that. You got to stay informed about this stuff. It's easy to, to stay informed. Like, why would you do that? Is your light bill worth risking somebody's life for? Really? I mean, I do question how people will, way out what's uh i guess ethically right in their mind when you got kids to take care of and feed i get it but man it's it's not like we're in the depression we're not in bread lines yet you know what i mean so don't go out and kill anybody for that and then realistically from uh, i guess a logical point of view if you don't have ethics or morals if you want but you still want the virus to leave we still have to starve the damn thing out 
So we just need to chill from each other for a little while. Just stock up, whatever you got to do, go home. And I think we just need to chill because the martial law thing could happen. If people start getting stupid, that actually could happen. I don't want that to happen. Last thing I want is the military running through the streets and the government doing whatever they're going to do, you know? So we don't, we got to show them that we can do stuff for ourselves every now and then. That's how we get our power back anyways, right? Anyways, I'm just ranting. But uh, after the How the World Ran at the top of the next hour, The Secret Teachings with Ryan Gable is going to be on. And then we'll be back next week for another round of guests. They haven't canceled the UFO conference in the Ozarks yet. I'm assuming that they will at some point, but it doesn't look like they are. So I'm just going to say that we may still be going to that. <laughs> I can't believe they haven't canceled it, but we may still be going to that. So that's kind of cool. And I do want to thank Pacho for all your hard work this week, brother. Also, uh, everybody over at the Fringe FM, a special shout out to Barbara, Amanda, Jeremy Scott, Eric Markham, all you guys in the Fringe FM chat, Chronoak's official music, and also the official DJ, Steezy Stevie. We'll be right. We'll be, let's see, we'll be right back. We'll be back next week on Moon Day. Good night, guys. Have a good weekend. Take care of each other.